My name is Evan Silo, and I'm a technical representative at McLeod Division of McGee Industries. I've been with the company since 2008 and have been supporting customers uh, using mold release agents and industrial lubricants. This presentation is going to focus on proper application of mold release to rotationally molded parts. After selecting the proper mold release coating with your mold release supplier and receiving the sample, the first thing you want to do is review the fact sheet. This will have important information on uh, application, if you need to dilute the product, and other critical information which may help you or assist you in applying the mold release agent. Another important piece of paperwork that's going to accompany any product shipped is a safety data sheet. This will give you a rundown of the hazards, if it's a hazardous material, and safety equipment needed when running the coating. Now that we have the product we're going to use selected, the safety data sheet and fact sheet reviewed, we're going to look at some of the tools that are needed to apply the release agent. I have several different products here that are basically do the same thing. I'm going to start from the left and move to the right. The first one you see there will say Atomizer. That is a product by Milwaukee SureShot. Um, it is a unit that uses shop air so you would unscrew the top, put some material in it, in this case a max of 16 ounces, close it, pressurize it to maybe 80 pounds, uh, and then it has that little spray nozzle on it and once you have it pressurized you could spray it onto the tool surface or you could spray it into a rag and wipe it on. Moving over to the right you'll see a skinny white McLube container. That is a hand pump spray bottle. That is typically what we see used in the industry. They are relatively cost effective and work pretty well. If you have the right tip selected as well, you can get a nice miss with a good hand pump sprayer. What you want to avoid are pin streams, which we'll discuss later. The next unit is a pressure pot, kind of like an HVLP type sprayer. This one is supplied by Turbo Spray. And you would fill this up with a couple quarts of material, but they do have larger ones that could hold up to five gallons or larger. And then you would have that gun that's laying on the table there in black that would be fed from this pressure pot. You would adjust the air coming in that feeds the gun, and you would adjust the pressure pot air that feeds the liquid. Then you could spray larger molds a lot easier without having to refill all the time. The next thing I want to talk about is the skinny McLeod container with the black liquid in it. This is a mold cleaner. It's always important to start with a clean mold. You, know, you could do that with a chemical type stripper or cleaner or you could use other methods like a scotch bright. You could sand it, sandblast it, ice blast it. And then it's also important to have you know various rags, gloves, safety glasses. Um, if you're going to be starting with a hot mold and there's a target temperature like some of the semi-permanent bake-on coatings have, it would be good to have a thermometer handy. This one just has to be a handheld laser one. And then, you know, shop towels are already always a good thing to have around. I also included, which sometimes people forget, are extra labels. You know, if you're going to be transferring this material into another container, please properly label it. It'll make your life a lot easier trying to find it and knowing what it is when it's needed. Now that we have all the equipment, let's test spray pattern. With this gun, or spray gun that I have, it only has two settings, mist or pin stream. You do not want it to be set on pin stream. This is going to apply too much material and lend itself to dripping down the mold surface, or saturating, or oversaturating the rag. As you can see here, I'm applying it, and you can just see it dripping down. That's way too much material going on. Now. I switched it over to mist and I will be spraying that surface and it's also almost so fine of a mist that you can't tell it's going on. You'll see it turn slight brown uh, in a couple seconds and that's just because it's wetting the surface out very uniformly. It's putting a nice even coat on and that's really what you want to work with. So please set up your sprayers like that. Now that you have your sprayer set up, let's get the rag started. It's important not to have a balled up rag. Um, when you do that, those rags tend to get thrown on the ground or in the corner or used for other things. When it's a nicely folded rag, it has a purpose, so please just take a little care and fold it. Now that we have our sprayer set up and the rag folded, we're going to moisten the rag. 
This is done by spraying the mist into the rag and squeezing it lightly throughout the process to ensure you're not oversaturating or getting drips. If you are getting drips, just move it aside, keep those drips off the mold, and then just m try to work around the rag a little bit to get it evenly saturated. One of the important areas on this tooling, and thank you Pennsylvania College of Technology for allowing us to come and use your tooling and rotational molding machine and your workshop uh, for doing this presentation, but the parting line is an important area. That's why we're going to focus here on applying it first. Once we're done with the parting line, we're going to wipe a coating on in a horizontal and vertical motion going up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, because this is a heated tool, that it's going to evaporate quickly, and then we can quickly move into the second application of our mold release, which would be side to side, side to side. Once that is complete, you can see there's lots of circles on the top of this tooling uh, with different gauges and depth. These have very little draw, so they're going to need attention uh, to make sure you have the mold release in there. For this application, we're just going to wet a little bit of the tip of the rag and then swirl it around. Otherwise, you could spray a little bit in that hole as long as it's not too hot and the mold release isn't evaporating fast, and then just work it around to make sure it's properly applied. For this tooling, we have the temperature set to about 180 degrees. For our coatings, we typically like to see 150 Fahrenheit or higher for initial application, and that just facilitates the evaporation of water and helps the material lay out a little nicer. Kind of picture it like you're at home, you spill water on the table, it tends to beat up. If it was a warm surface, maybe not frying pan hot, but you know warm like a hot car, it tends to uh, wet that surface a little better or sheet the water. Now starting with the main mold, we're going to take a little care on the party lines, wiping the coating on there, and then we'll be focusing on applying the mold release inside the mold. Um, this one's a little challenging obviously because it's a, a deeper mold and you have surfaces that are facing you. Um, what he's going to do here is do a little of combination method where one, he'll be applying it to the rag so that he has the rag moistened and two, because we have that nice mist set up, he can spray it onto the surface of the tooling without risking drips and then wipe into any areas he might have missed. In the bottom of the mold, we wanted to take a little extra precaution. We did have a nice mist on that surface, but because of the texturing, which is a spiky slash maybe corrugated look to it, we took some extra time to wipe the coating in there and ensure that we have complete coverage of that molding surface. Now he's just finishing by doing some horizontal and vertical application of the mold release on the tooling surface as well. Not always needed, but in this case it is recommended to run a dry cycle. Here we have closed the mold, we are going to put it into the oven and run a quick cycle. In this case we like to see the mold temperatures be between 250 and 350 degrees for about 5 minutes. This allows proper curing of the mold release which will give you the greatest durability and the most resistance to abrasion. Now that the product has been cured, we will remove the top, target a few of the trouble areas like the holes and the parting lines, and then we're ready to mold. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I would recommend anyone who has questions about application of mold release to reach out to their suppliers. We often have presentations, PowerPoints, or just general information that we can give you on tips and tricks for doing that. While my goal here is to make this technical. You know, it's important to just note that mold release doesn't need to be that technical. Just don't over apply it, thin even films, and let it dry before use, and you really can't screw it up. Um, good luck out there. I wish you guys the best, and thank you again.